Hello everyone, welcome back to the layout. Figured today would be a good day to go over some things uh, that you should do when you get uh, new locomotives. And uh, so I wanted to just kind of cover that with you and uh, show you some of the stuff I do. Some of this is pretty similar to the locomotive maintenance video, but I'm also gonna do a couple upgrades to this and uh, I'm gonna show those to you as well. I'll make it all into one long video, but the two upgrades I will probably split out and so uh, we'll cover that in a bit. All right, the first thing I like to do is give it a once over and uh, take a look at what we have here and get a good assessment of it. It's an Atherin SD50, Union Pacific, DCC, and sound. Really like it. Uh, it looks pretty nice. I kind of gave it a quick visual look over. You can see some minor stuff like the antenna on top is a little bent, but no big deal. The initial things that I noticed as I look this over um, cab windows, I think, have been slid all the way in, so I'm going to have to look at that. And there's no interior in the cab. A lot of Atherin locomotives usually come with at least some sort of interior, so we're going to have to fix that. Uh, otherwise, this side's pretty solid, but when we pick it up and flip it around, this side, the handrails, as I was handling them, just continually kept bumping off. And I can see where there was some glue marks on here. So my guess is it was a problem and they tried to glue it and just didn't use the right glue. In fact, there you go. You can see them just kind of starting to pop off. So we'll touch that up. Otherwise, pretty decent. Uh, looks like we might have a couple white touch-up paint type of stuff, but I might ignore that altogether. Uh, this is the unit that doesn't have uh, the flared wing right here, which is kind of neat. Like the little window that's a see-through. Um, these grills are see-through, fans are see-through, um, stuff like that. Uh, one other thing to look at underneath, check out just kind of a quick condition of the wheels. They actually look really good. Um, I'm probably gonna clean them anyways. I always recommend you should do that. But uh, we'll get there. Okay, so now that we have that back on the rails, let's go to our next step, which is figuring out what address this is. All right, we're going to apply some track power, see if this powers up. That sounds nice. Through some trial and error, you're going to have to figure out if the decoder was reprogrammed or not, and to what number. So I always start with the locomotive number on the side, 5017. Uh, if that doesn't work, which it didn't in this case, then I try the short versions of 501 or 017, because I've seen a lot of people do those as well. And if those don't work, I'll usually go to the factory default of 3, uh, which is what this one happens to be. You can see that there. Uh, so we'll fix that here in a minute, but, uh, checking out some sounds and actually let me get my other microphone out here so you can hear it as well. Cause it sounds pretty decent. Let's set this over here. I like that. Headlights come on, you can kind of see them there. Uh, these are the typical Atherin bulbs, uh, incandescent bulbs, they are not LEDs. I'm gonna replace those as well, that's one of the two upgrades, and fixing the interior is the other upgrade. I'm gonna show you how to do both of that. But uh, front headlights, rear headlights, I can see come on just fine. Uh, let's do speed step one and get some movement going. Nice sound. Nice slow movement, I don't see jerking, that's something else you want to watch for. Usually jerking can indicate some pretty dry gears and that you need to do some maintenance. We'll do it anyways because we don't know the last time that this happened. Nice.
Yeah. Seems to be nice and smooth. I'll play around with some more with the DCC sounds later. I also noticed that the number boards aren't lit. Makes me wonder, since we're in there, if we can do something about that. Eh, I'll take a look. But overall, pretty decent. Um, first step before we take this off the layout and go to the workbench is let's uh, clean some wheels. So let me get all the stuff ready. Okay, we got our paper towel with some rubbing alcohol on it. And so what I'm going to do is lay that down like this. You can see I have rubbing alcohol on the front half. I'll actually lay back this up a little so you can see that better. It's dry on the second half. <laughs> Makes things a little more efficient. We're going to just go ahead and use the controller and our hand. I'm just going to hold that there, kind of step up the speed steps a little bit. Okay, let it roll forward to the dry spot. Let's roll back off quick, look at how that looks. Not bad, you know, that's uh, that's really not that dirty. Somebody either didn't run it a whole lot or they didn't do a whole lot of maintenance on it. Oops, my bad. All right, let's do the rear. It's holding its sound really well while one set of trucks is on the towel. Uh, so that's a good thing. That also tells you that you don't have any wiring problems, which is another good thing. Um, otherwise, you'd have to worry about that. I also noticed that the front... Uh, one of the front handrails is popped off, so I'll fix that too. Alright. I'm holding the paper towel, by the way, with the other hand. There we go. Alright, let's take a look at that, see how that looks. Yeah, you know, not bad. That's kind of normal use. That's kind of what I'd expect to see. So overall, uh, pretty decent. Pretty happy with that. All right, last step before we get this uh, off the layout here and onto the workbench is I'm going to program this. Uh, so I'm going to show you, I'm going to hold this up here so that you can kind of see the steps that I can do. Uh, you'll see the screens. I'll tell you what buttons I'm hitting. At the very bottom, there's this program button. And so we're using that. Uh, this is isolated on the same, or on one track, no other locomotives. And that's something that you want because you're going to go to the program, use programming track. And that's hitting that program button four times. Do that. It'll read what it is. Press one for standard. So we wait. There you go. Manufacturer 141. There's codes you can Google to look that up. I just know from experience, I think that's DC, uh, NCE. Decoder version 070. And then here's what. Let's look at the short address. It reads what it is, which is three. I usually set it to the last three, but I don't like to use the short address, but still we'll do 017. Do you want to activate this address? You one for yes. If you hit enter, it's no. So hit enter, long address, and see it reads it as three, 5017. So if we do 5017, my apologies, I'm trying to Manage the glare. Enter. Activate this. Press 1 for yes. Enter config. No, that's where you can set up motor control and everything like that. You can just hit this escape program escape button back here a bunch of times. Pull yourself back out. And we're back to where we are. One thing I usually do at the end, though, is I unplug it. Uh, let it sit for a few seconds. I've seen it before with programming where the um, NCE power cabs don't really remember what you just set a locomotive to if you programmed it. See, like that. So I'd hit select locomotive, 5017, and then, yep. So program now to the right road number. Um, so that's pretty much all I do. I like the way the motor control works. I like the way it sounds. I don't want to risk factory uh, defaulting it, but if you need to, in the programming mode, so when you do uh, the prog use programming track, and actually, I'll show you just on the main, 
you would hit two for CV and you would hit eight and then enter and enter the value of eight and hit enter and that's what would wipe it. And I'm not doing that right now, but if you guys ever run into a problem like that, right off the bat, you can't find the locomotive number, you know it has power, things like that, <clears throat> put it on an isolated track, set CV8 to value 8, and uh, that pretty much factory wipes the decoder in it, and, and you can start over from address 3. So, uh, that's just a tip for you, but I like the way it sounds and the way it runs right now. I did a couple test runs before the start of this video, so I kind of know what it's like, but... Uh, there you go. I think we'll do that. We're going to move into the uh, train room, or the train room, uh, the uh, uh, workbench next and uh, take a look at uh, some upgrades and gluing some stuff. You can see this front handrail right here came off while I was uh, um, cleaning the wheels. So that'll be one more thing to put in. It'll be easier with tweezers instead of my fingers. Okay, guys, we're back in here on the workbench. And uh, let's worry about getting the shell off here and doing some interior detail stuff. We also need to glue these handrails on, and so we're going to look at that too. I also, speaking of interior, did 3D print some different items. There's a control stand right there, and then I have a couple interior seats for it. Uh, there's one with hand rests, or armrests, excuse me, and one without. Uh, my apologies here, I just realized um, it's off. I think we're going to put those in there. I'll kind of quick paint them. I thought I had some clear, er, uh, regular styrene that we could use for the base, but I don't. So I think we're just going to use some thick cardboard, uh, make it easy that way. So, uh, as always, try and use something that's going to be gentle on your locomotive. And uh, we'll go take the uh, base off here. Usually the nice thing about Atherin locomotives is it's just the screws for... It's just the screws for the couplers that hold the shell on. Push that out as a tight fit. Set that off to the side. We'll do the same on the end one here. Oops. There we go. Okay, let's see if that does it. Yep, nice and easy. Then, I'm going to pull back. See, there's those micro bulbs, micro incandescent bulbs, just like that. Okay, shells free, uh, which works out, and I can actually see now that we did that, that there are windows that have been slid shut. So you can go ahead and grab those just like that. All right, you can see how this handrail here is fighting us, how it keeps popping up like that. We're going to go ahead and work on putting that back in place. So I usually just go ahead and grab it like this and uh, pop it in there. Use my finger kind of gently to make sure those pins go in. You don't want to push too hard and break the pins. Then we're going to use some glue. This is uh, Mr. Cement glue. It's a thin one and the uh, lid has a nice applicator brush on it. I'm going to go ahead and put little drops right alongside those just like this and making sure that you're not getting too much glue on it so it doesn't run and make sure you also don't get it on your fingers don't want it to uh, touch somewhere else and then you start damaging your model one other thing to note too is that you see right up here there's some decals or paint applied and you want to avoid that area because model glue will actually take that off and we don't want that uh, once the glue is applied then we are going to uh, go ahead and just kind of give it one more little tap with our fingers. Uh, make sure that those uh, stanchions are in there and we'll be good to go. All right, let's move on to the interior. I'm using my tweezers here to rough measure the distance there and the length of the cab so, um, so that I can guessing, get a rough estimate of what size I need for one, the base. I'm going to use that in comparison the to there, the cardboard box. The width. Just hold it like this, and I'm going to drag across, and then line it up again so and drag same. across. So what we're gonna do, and then I'm going to go the other direction, go do the same, box here. with roughly about the same measurements. This isn't perfect, but if you look, this is going to give us a nice grid pattern that we can then lines, start to cut out with the hobby knife. The so we'll go ahead again, and start cutting that out. Lines, just follow the same overlap, lines, and, lines, and then if we make any mistakes, we can always make this bigger or smaller, depending on what's going on. So let's go ahead and cut that out, and we'll get moving on here to the next step. 
All right, so here's how this should fit. Looks like it'll fit right there, which is what I want. And we will give that a I'll test like to this. see if that's the right position or not. And uh, how that's going to glue. Probably going to glue that with super glue. But uh, we'll take a look at all that here in just a second. Make sure that it fits okay. We'll also make sure it fits around the drive shaft okay. But it looks pretty good from there. All right, let's take our super glue and we're going to grab our details here. Put a little bit of super glue on them and uh, glue them to the cardboard roughly in the position that I want. The reason I'm using super glue is because of these prints being resin prints. Super glue is actually what sticks to them better and it will hold it a little bit better versus uh, white glue or some of the other glues out there. And you still can use them, but that mixed with the cardboard is just going to make it a lot nicer and a lot easier if we just use super glue. So go ahead and stick that down. Make sure it's kind of roughly in the right position. And then we'll put our seats on. Double check in here, making sure it's stuck. Okay. All right, let's move on to our seats now. So here's the one with the armrest. Little drop of glue. This is going to be for our engineer. Go ahead and put that in place, just like that. Kind of move the control stand back a little bit. There we go. There, I like the way that looks. All right, let's move on to the fireman side. I'm gonna use my tweezers this time so I don't get super glue on my fingers. Little drop of super glue again. And there we go. Down where it should go. All right, looks good. We will make sure that this kind of fits before the glue gets too dry so that we can uh, put this back on if we need to and uh, or move stuff around if we need to. But uh, let's take a look here. Looks pretty decent. I like the position. I think it looks good on there. Um, it seems kind of low from what it should be though. So we'll, we'll tackle that here coming up. But I need to let the super glue dry on this first, so uh, we'll do that and uh, move on a little bit and uh, come back here in just a minute. Okay, here's what I came up with to make this sit where I want. I glued some styrene. I actually cut it here, and I'm going to glue it to the bottom. And that's actually going to raise this up to the height that I want. So let's put some super glue on here, and we'll give it a try, see how this looks. Same thing as before. We'll just have to hold the styrene pieces. These are spare junk sprue pieces off of other model kits so uh, we'll just put them on there kind of hold them for a second and give it a try there we go just like that i did cut the rear one wider on purpose so that it would span a couple of the supports a little bit better and i think that's a better option than the front one the front one might not be needed but we'll we'll figure that out once we get in there all right moving on to painting now I'm going to use this uh, Tamiya Neutral Gray XF53 right here. That's actually a really close color to UP's gray that they use on their locomotives. So if you're ever looking to touch up some spots, this is a good color for it. Going to go ahead and paint the floor and the base, or the same thing I guess, uh, gray, which is what we want. Most of the UP cabs that I've seen are just kind of that same gray on the color, or color on the floor, I mean. And so uh, we're going to go ahead and paint the floor like that. Shouldn't take a whole lot since this is small, so small. And uh, we'll get that touched up there. And then we'll figure out what to move on to for the seats and control stand. And then we'll do some final details. So I'll show you that here in just a second. Let me put this in the water and we'll go to semi-gloss black. All right, so Tamiya semi-gloss black, if I can get it open. Uh, it is uh, XF19, I believe, is the number on it. I'll have to look at that later. Uh, I like this. It's going to look pretty nice from kind of a uh, worn and repainted color. Uh, so you don't need a lot. One thing that I like to do, especially with semi-gloss black, is I will dab it instead of brush it. You can brush it if you want, but uh, you're going to have to do it, it basically in layers and cover it in coats. Whereas if you dab it, as long as you don't have it too thick, uh, you'll actually cover this in, in pretty much one shot, which is kind of nice. Especially when you're just trying to do something quick and easy on the fly. I mean, keep in mind that you're going to see this a little bit, but you're not going to see it enough to be super stressed about 
uh, how the paint looks and everything like that. Be sure to hit all your sides, even your backs, just in case, and uh, make sure that you cover everything. You can always go back and touch up if something needs to be touched up. But like I said, don't worry or don't stress too much. Well, there's one other thing that we're going to do coming up here too, which is going to be uh, highlighting the detail here on the control stand, and I will show you how we do that. But for the control stand panel here, where all the levers and gauges are, I'm using a, a little less paint on the brush, so it's a little more thin. That way it's not too uh, globby or too thick to prevent you from seeing details, and uh, that'll help you out here in the long run. Get the last chair painted, and then what we will do is go ahead and let it dry for a while before we move on to the final details, and then glue this into the shell. So almost there. There we go. Oops, I almost forgot the actual front of the seat. There we go. Okay. Looks good. All right, let's let this dry. Then we'll come back and uh, do some details on that. But that's what it looks like and should look pretty good on the inside of the cab. All right, so we've let this dry for a little bit. Here's what it looks like dry, if you can see that a little bit better. Uh, not bad at all, like the shininess. And here's what we're going to use. Panel line accent color. This is gray from Tamiya. Be sure to shake it up pretty well. And then this has its own little applicator brush on it. So I'll show you what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and just kind of uh, paint this right over the top of the control stand. It's going to start to run a little bit. And it's okay that it's going on a little thick. It'll thin out. Here you go, just like that. It's gonna make these details really start to pop. I'm gonna wipe off excess off of the mini brush and use it to absorb or soak up some of it right here off of the gauges so that it's not too pronounced and obvious. And there you go. Now, all those details are gonna just really pop and it's gonna look really decent, especially if you just happen to look in the window. Okay, so my plan was to show you guys LED lighting upgrade, as you can see I have that there. Uh, however, uh, this board does not support that. This is a 2018 board. Um, it's economy or RTR is what the model number is. Uh, these normally on newer ones have um, a pad about here or about here or sometimes back here that provides a higher voltage output. These only do the one and a half volt, which is what these little micro bulbs are. Um, so uh, for now, this will stay as uh, uh, standard bulbs and we'll do the LED upgrade in a different video. Um, so I have the front headlights fed back through and we are going to do some work on that. Make sure that they actually come through. There you go. And then what we're going to do next, I'm gonna kind of lay it so it isn't gonna put much strain on the bulbs. Use your finger to kind of push those back to where they look natural, even, like that. Oops, I gotta re-glue that hand grab there. And then we are going to take some tape and I like using um, just masking tape uh, this is the stuff that I like using it's uh, it's still strong but it's thin which works out pretty decent we're gonna take that I'm gonna put it in here whoops my bad and that might actually be a little too long let's cut that down there and take put that in here right across the top of the cab, right where the bulbs are, where the wires are, so that it will hold those in place and not be visible. Just like that. And then double check. Looks like we can shove the top one back, but overall looks pretty decent. Okay. Now we're gonna do the same with the rear lights. So, rotate this over. this at an angle a little bit so I can see it and then one by one you're gonna shove these through the back these are kind of side by side ones yeah 
And if they bend a little bit, you might have to bend them back straight. It's no big deal. It's just a thing. There we go. There's one. And there's two. And same thing, make some adjustments. Looks pretty good. We're gonna take the tape again, right over the back, just like that, to hold that. All right, so there's our, there's our lights in. The last step we're gonna do quick before we close this back up, well, actually, second to last step, one, we're gonna put the interior in, uh, into the cab, but um, we also need to do some maintenance on it. So um, first thing, let's go ahead and put this in and I flip it over. We're gonna take our super glue. And the reason I'm using super glue like that, oops, sorry, yep, uh, is because uh, it is breakable, so uh, in the event that I want to take this out or do something different, it's not a big deal uh, for me to do that. So, um, all right. Take this in. We're going to do that. And then we are going to lift from under. Ooh, that didn't go well. that right back where it belongs and I'm gonna flip it over and reach in through the window to push it down to where it needs to go and let's see here I think we're binding a little bit right there There we go. Sometimes you just need to use your finger. Okay, let's check how that looks. Pretty decent. Works for me. And of course the windows like to just fall into the frame. You might just have to leave that alone for now. No big deal. All right, so last step, while that sits and dries a little bit, uh, last step is some maintenance. So uh, we cleaned the wheels already, which you saw uh, earlier in the video. We are going to get this out and do a little bit of gearbox maintenance. And you know what? Mm. Actually, let's look at the flywheel and everything in here. We're going to grab the, this one. Uh, so this is the Bell 108. Um, what I'm doing is uh, kind of like the maintenance video. We're just going to put some drops right where the U-joints are. Help keep things a little more lubricated. Like that. And then we're going to put the cover on. Make sure your wires all fold up okay. Make sure they're not getting pinched when you slide them in. See how those are kind of over here. There's uh, the red one right there that has a tendency to get pinched and this one, slide those in. Double check your other side. Looks good. And I see some random static grass that got in there to pull that out. How's that look? Looks decent. Other than it popped my interior up. So let's see if we can fix that quick. Hmm. hitting my interior. 
and apparently my glue for the side rails didn't hold either. Let's grab this back out real quick. Uh, so when I put this in, the front hit. So I think we're going to, uh, I think we're going to see about taking this off. Okay, let's pull this piece off. Add in a little bit more super glue. Like that. And then we'll take and put this back in and we'll reattach the, oh, come on, there we go. We'll reattach the handrails at the end here. All right, let me hold this for a little bit and we'll get back to it. All right, there we go, all closed up. Ready for the last bit of maintenance, so flip it over. And this part's the easy part. You're going to put your couplers back in. It's going to hold your shell on since we're done in the shell. Now, if you do lighting upgrades, and we'll talk about this in a future video when we do that. Oh, come on. There you go. Uh, you will want to test uh, your lighting before you put your shell back on. It's always a good idea. But for now, since we didn't do that, I'm not worried about it. All right. Remember when you put those on, um, you want those to be tight, but not so tight that your couplers won't turn. Um, so give them a little flick just to make sure that they're okay. Don't think I have the back one centered. There it is. Okay, we're good. All right. Now, use your uh, flat blade screwdriver, and we're going to go um, unclip these uh, these truck clips right here. And they're kind of easier to get to from the front end. You go in and just over to the side like that, and then you go to the back and over to the side. there like that and so you can take a look um, there's pretty much not a whole lot of grease on there so that's it's a good thing that we're doing that it's due for some grease maintenance um, I see some like lint type of hairs and stuff like that um, go ahead and pull those out um, with tweezers if there's too much grease uh, then you want to uh, definitely go in and uh, um, wipe that out, start pulling it out with like toothpick, things like that. We're using Labelle 106 as our grease. This is good stuff. And you don't need a whole lot. Take a little drop like that. Press it into the gear. And I usually do that for all three. Okay. Just like that. And then we'll put that cover back on. Just push it on, should snap, good to go. And we'll do the rear one and be done. We'll go back to layout. All right, and as you can see, we're back up and running. Should run pretty decent. Uh, looks nice, nice knowing that we have the maintenance done on it. So we will, uh, Hook up to a couple trains, do some test runs, and uh, call it a good night. How about that? Thanks, guys, for watching and hanging out. I hope that you learned some stuff from this video, got some ideas. If you have questions, as always, be sure to comment, and I really appreciate your support. Thank you all.